Hey guys, thanks for being here today. We are needle felting hearts and we're going to show you a few different ways you can do that and a few different ways you can share them and display them. So be sure to hit the subscribe button and keep watching for our free needle felting tutorial. Hi, I'm Kayla. Hi, I'm Hannah. Hi, I'm Ann. Hi, I'm Marie, and we are coming to you live from Austin, Texas, because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Hi, friends, happy Wednesday, and man, it's February already. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy! We are having a nice, wet, balmy February. Yeah. <laughs> I hope wherever you are, it's not too, too cold. But man, people have been like freezing around mm -hmm. the country. So we're going to send you some warmth your way and calming weather wherever <laughs> you are. And because we're all doing really great here, what have you guys been up to? Oh. Painting some needles. <laughs> <laughs> Getting uh, another round of NZ goodies oh, made up. Oh, fun, fun, fun. Oh, for me. <laughs> what are you working on, Ann? I, I have gotten the pleasure of, of speaking with many of our felting friends today by phone mm. and, and email. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so thank you all for being awesome. <laughs> yeah. We love being of service to you guys, and we're just having such a great time playing with you all. And today we're going to needle felt some stuff. So how's that sound? Sounds fun. We're going to get started. <laughs> Thank you for being here, everyone. If you haven't joined us before, welcome to Wooly Wednesday. This is what we like to do is hang out with our friends for about an hour and have an interactive show. So this is meant to be a time that we communicate back and forth. You might see some of our friends saying hi and where they're from. So I invite you to do that also. I'm gonna refresh so that I can see you. Anne is posting links to the group so people can find us. And you will see that we have friends all over the world. We are a living felt based in Austin, Texas, uh, just west of downtown, and we ship everywhere. So it's our blessing to get to have friends all over the world. And I want to do a shout out uh, to someone. Let me say this first. If you're joining us for the first time, every show is different. And today we are going to be needle felting hearts. So this is an example and there's a few behind me and we might look at, you know, how you could do a kind of a little pot arrangement like this. This lives in my kitchen window and every time I bring it to show and tell, my husband makes sure to tell me I have to bring it back. So <laughs> you just never know what someone's going to like. And we'll look at making hearts, whether they're puffy or flat and a few different ways you can do that. So before we get started, I want to do a real quick shout out. This is a really cute book that was gifted to us by the author Christine Summerfield. And I'll just hold that up. And it's called A Boy in His Tree. And it's just such a cute story. And you can see some of our MC1 bats in here. And I think it's like a very Waldorf-esque very sweet uh, pictures I think that children would relate to. And it's all a story about a boy and his tree. So we wanna say thank you so much to Christine for gifting this to us. And I'll hold it up here on the back. I don't know if it's on Amazon, but it's Wise Lily Press and wiselilystories.com. Good, everyone's telling me, and then over here for the YouTube camera. Okay, cool. So I wanted to say that. Thank you so much, Christine. We are keeping this in the shop. We have a nice little reference library and just a library people can visit while they're here. And we will share that uh, for anyone who's inspired. Thank you so much for that. And one more thing I wanted to share is uh, for those of you who have been waiting to let you know that our little sheepy bowls by Medworks PA and our Living Felt BFF mugs are back in stock. I know we kind of go in and out and in and out. I just want you to know that they're back in the shop. So preparing for today, I'm going to give a round of hearts to Joanne. And who's some folks here I can say hi to real quick, Anne? We have got Linda in Illinois, Alex in the UK. Uh, Karen in Pennsylvania, Kelly in Canada. Oh, sweet. Lots of cold places. Y'all are in cold places, probably inside where it's a good place to be and felt. And thank you for being here with us. Hey, you know what? The fairies brought in a few things that they want to share and show you of uh, fibers that they thought would be good for today's theme and just a theme of celebrating love and purples and berries and such. So <laughs> take it away, Anne. Yay! 
Thank you so much for being here today. The first pack that I'm going to show you is from our, our MC1 batting. This is our signature line of batting. We've got over 90 colors, some very gorgeous colors in there, and we have some assortment packs that are both a color family and thematic packs as well. So the one I'm going to be showing you today is our MC1 Purples and Berries Studio Pack. Okay, so it, it's these two columns right here, and I'm going to start right up here. This is MC1 Soft Pink, True Violet, Pomegranate, Sugar Plum, Orchid Pink, and Sorbet. And this, these colors are, are what's in this round. The rounds do change every time, but this is a really great assortment this is a really great representation of what the assortment pack will look like the studio pack <laughs> awesome thanks Anne. everyone's just really great colors they love them oh aren't mm -hmm. they gorgeous mm -hmm. someone says how much do we need to make the hearts oh just a smidge <laughs> yeah <laughs> just a smidge cool thanks Anne. absolutely <laughs> Okie dokie. Hi everybody. So I'm going to show the other half of this box right here. And this is our merino top right here and this column right here. And it's a 19.5, there we go, <laughs> micron count. So it's a very fine fiber. It's awesome for wet felting and it is so soft. It feels great against your skin if you're making clothes or anything like that. Um, this pack right here, our studio pack, is Chasing Butterflies. And the colors that are in here, this dark purple right here is Iris, Bordeaux, Raspberry, Purple, Petunia, and under here is Lavender. Yeah, and they're awesome colors for hearts too, for wet felting hearts for Valentine's Day. Oh, everyone says they love the colors and they're so beautiful. It's one of my favorite packs. It's got <laughs> such a cool variety of dark, deep purples in there. Lovely. All right. Thanks, Kayla. Yeah. Tag you. Okay. Okay. Hey, everybody. How are y'all doing today? So I'm showing y'all our Fairy Hollow Specialty Designer Pack. So it's a super fun pack. It's geared towards wet felting, and it's got a bunch of our luster fibers, some merino top, and the MC1. So starting with the MC1, we have I feel like I'm gonna put there you go, pomegranate, indigo, and bamboo, and then we have five merino top colors in here. We have violet merino top, and this is all the 19.5 micron merino top as well. So we have violet, larkspur, raspberry, ballerina, and kiwi in the merino top. And in the luster, actually let's not go luster fibers yet, in the silk blends, we're gonna have a lovely French vanilla, or French lavender, and a lovely honeydew. And now for the luster fibers, we're gonna have some leaf tussa, and these will vary from pack to pack. You'll get a little bit of each luster fiber, but sometimes the colors can change with the theme of the pack. So we've got some leaf tussa silk, some royal purple hankies, some kiwi sari silk. Over here we have some onion and olive neps. And down here is a lovely piece of our fairy circle bamboo. And I think that is all the bling fibers. Mm -hmm. So yeah, those are really great to add texture and just a lot of fun details to any wet felted piece. Mm -hmm. Wendy uh, Taylor says, looks like a cottage garden in a bowl. <laughs> <laughs> and Shona, it's called Fairy Hollow. Uh, yeah, that's what they asked. What's the name of the pack? Very hollow. Yep. Yes. Awesome. Thank y'all. Thank you, Hannah. Yay, fairies! Aren't they awesome? 
like little rays of sunshine just bouncing around preparing everything that you order getting all of the products ready and then put in your box and they even answer the phone and just spread love 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 <laughs> so I'm in a big heart to the fairies thanks for being here everyone so Today we're going to focus on needle felting hearts and the thing with hearts is they're so fun and easy to make and they're so easy to give in a variety of ways. Before we jump to that we brought some of our wet felting hearts and I just want to tell you, you see these uh, big ones up here on the wall. These, these three here are wet felted and we did that together right about this time last year during a Wooly Wednesday. So if you're interested to make those, they're like Twizzlers. We hang them from doors and windows and you can hang them outside. You can watch back that past video and I think it's on YouTube also under Ants Nodding. It's on YouTube under our wet felting tutorials and under Wooly Wednesday. The video quality on YouTube for that video is not great because we we're using a different camera but anyway it's available today we're going to look at needle felting hearts and we put one on gloria here uh, there's a few different things you can do with them you know you can make them into fun and playful jewelry whether you wear them you know for like just the moment a necklace earrings a bracelet and um i have my little flower pot here this is um this is kind of a timeless thing. We've had this for a long, long time where we made, you know, a hanging garland. We hang this on our door. Or you could make something like this one up here and we interwove it with wooden hearts. So there's lots of things you can do with it. And I'm just gonna show you a few ways we can needle felt hearts. And I know that y'all were asking about an amount. So I'll show you what we use just to needle felt a little small piece. And we're gonna turn down our cameras and get started on that demo. Wendy Taylor shared that the Wooly Wednesday that we made the heart twirlers was her first Wooly Wednesday. <laughs> That's so sweet. So it's like happy anniversary, Wendy. Oh, <laughs> so good. This is uh, this is our MC1 batting, which Anne is the one who showed you the that first round of colors that we looked at. This is how we sell it, is in a two ounce bundle, but you can also get it in the studio pack that she showed you. And we also have goodie packs, which are just like an assortment of 12 colors. If you order a two ounce bundle from us, this is how it comes packaged. So it looks like a great big soup can. And then today I'm gonna to be working with just little bits of this fiber. So save every little bit because you can use it for something. And this is my collection of fibers that I'm gonna use for today. And I thought if y'all are interested that we'll do a little play on this, um, heart in a heart, sort of heart flowers in a pot and we'll make some little ones just like that okay so in order to do that I'm gonna make like a little puffy heart like this and this thing probably weighs a tenth of an ounce it weighs very very little um, and there's a couple of ways that I like to make puffy hearts and then you can make them a little bit flatter also so all we're going to really work with for this particular project is I'm going to use a little bit of uh, fiber. Why don't I use True Violet? I'm going to use a little bit of green for the flower stems and flower pots. And I brought along a little cheapy. I got this at Michael's. Couldn't even have cost me a dollar for this little tiny flower pot. We're going to use some core wool. And I brought some uh, just green cloth covered wire that we're going to work with too. And some wire cutters and such like that. So let's start with the heart. Okay, let's start with the heart. And I'm going to show you how to make it puffy to start with if you want it to be a little bit beefy. And I'll try and blow up my screen here in a minute so I can see what all of y'all are saying. This is just a super thin layer of our batting. It's actually more like a half thickness because our bat is very nice and thick. And to make a puffy little heart, I usually just start with a strip. When you want to divide this wool, notice how the grain is running. If you tear it with the grain, it's always going to be easier. And then to con take, keep control of it and make that even, I fold it in half. So I'm gonna fold it in half and then just tear a little bit off, just like this. 
if you keep control of it, divide it as evenly as you can, it'll be nicer to work with. And now I think I'm going to start with about, uh, maybe about half of this. Thank you. And I'm just going to show you how I make that little heart. And I know I'm backwards from you, but hopefully you can follow. If you ever made paper airplanes or anything in school, this is going to make a whole lot of sense. Notice that this end is a little more blunt and chunky, and this end is a little more tapered. Save that for the outside. Save, the, save that more tapered end, wispy end, for the outside. I start just by folding it like you would a paper triangle. So fold the top corner over, and then fold this down, and then fold this over, and then fold this down. It's like a crooked triangle, but don't worry about that. We'll shape it as we go. And you can make it a little bit tight, just keep folding it until you kind of get to the bottom and then fold that over. So we have like a great big triangle. And let me know if I need to do that again. I mean, it's pretty basic, but just in case you need to see something again, uh, stop me before I needle felt it. So all I did was triangular fold it all the way down. Before I start attacking it, Um, the first thing, the first thing I like to do is smooth all these loose fibers down. See how wispy they are and loose. You don't want any folds in your finished piece. So go with the grain as opposed to against it. So with that, I'm going to, the first thing I'm going to do is just tack down these surface layers, even before I start to shape and firm this up and notice that I'm going this way rather than against it. If you go against it, you'll create a great big line. So where it's wispy, just needle felt in that same direction. Wrap it around, get it to lay down, and just make a nice, smooth surface layer. Do we need to come in closer? Yeah. I'm gonna okay. Zoom in a You'll probably, Anne's probably going to zoom them both in just a little bit. Do I need to redo anything, or are we okay? If we could show that the triangle fold again. Okay, we'll just do this one over here. Okay, real quick. It's so easy. Y'all are going to see this so easy. Here we go. So if you've got more of a blunt end, make that on the inside. Just give yourself a long rectangle and take the top and fold it over to the edge. And then fold this part down. And that's all you're going to do is keep folding it to the edge and down. When you get to the end, you're going to have some gaps and stuff. Don't even worry about that. If you want, you can put another layer over, but you can salvage it if you take your fine needle right away and just close up those uh, surface gaps and then shape it. So get your surface smooth first, even though it's kind of big and gassy. Don't worry about that. Just get your surface area all smooth first and close up all those edges. And then we'll shape it and firm it. I should give Anne one to work on. <laughs> okay, so what we have right now is just a great big puffy odd shaped triangle. It looks like a little turnover or dumpling or something and that's absolutely perfect. So then you're just going to pick your favorite needles for shaping and firming. It might be something like a 38 star or a 38 triangle or it might be this uh, little cluster tool which is just three 42 triangles rubber band together. Both will work really well. If you're not sure about your needles, our advice is always to experiment. And when you go to needle felt, firm this up, work all the way around it. Work all the edges as well as top down. If you only compress down, it's going to get really flat and that may be desirable. But if you want it to be puffy and have dimension like this, then work, go into the edges as much as you go into the top and start shaping it and guiding that wool right now while it's big and loose and gassy. And you can take that, for example, that tallest corner, if that's too shapely for you, then go get it right now and just go right into it wherever you want it to lay down. If you want the back to be flat, then keep working mostly the top and the back, you'll just go straight down. But if you want both sides to be bulbous, 
if you will, then treat both sides the same. Meaning don't just needle felt down into it. So for this one, I'm going to treat it like I want both sides to be the same and I don't want one side to be flat. And Vicki asks, what needle are you using? Right now I'm just using a 38 triangle, which is really gentle. It's not too aggressive. And that gives me a real gradual approach and allows me to condense and shape in a real gradual manner. You see that I have a lot of needle marks, but a lot of that has to do with the fact that the wool is really airy. So there's a lot of room for the wool to compress in the first place. Now notice at the bottom, if I don't treat the bottom well, it'll be too flimsy. So you want to go up, go up into lengths that you want to firm up. Go right up into them and firm them up vertically rather than just going down into them. And I'm just going to needle felt and try and be quiet for a second and see if there's any questions. I'm going to switch to this so you can see how this one kind of works and let you, Anne feed me some questions. Robin asks, about how wide was the strip that you started with? A couple inches, maybe two, three, two, three fingers max. We can weigh these after so you can see. And Vicki asks, for the, the puffy hearts, when they're finished, will they, they be firm or, or cushy? I think that it's like medium. You could make it rock hard. I just, when I'm making a heart or something, I usually stop short of rock hard. But you could needle felt this thing until it was hard. So it's really up to you. But look, I mean, like I'm pressing on it and you can see my nail bed go white and it's not flattening to the end of the moon. So it's fairly firm, but it's not rock hard. So notice that we have a lot of room to shape at this point and you can start working on the, the tip and work your way around you know make it i like uneven hearts like not real perfect and not real uniform so go with what you like but make sure you work all areas because if you ignore a spot then it's going to get thin wool will get pulled to other areas and it'll be um there won't be as much wool underneath to needle felt into and papa asks is this the heart that is like the one on the necklace yes this is. The one on the necklace is only smaller. That's the only difference. Um, the one, I made the one on the, on the necklace a little bit flatter because I didn't want it to stick out too much. And I can show you another way to get there. But we're going to put this one on. Uh, these ones I think are going to go in my little flower pot. And you can see that we're pretty much there now, but don't stop with a lumpy, bumpy heart. You can, you know, of course, it's your heart. You can do, you can do whatever you want. I'm sure all of our hearts have a few lumps and bumps on them through the years. <laughs> but you can keep going and make your heart really nicely um, smooth and firm. And what I recommend is switching to some fine needles and sticking with that real gradual approach by working around the whole thing. So this is still quite a shaping tool. The 42 triangle still shapes quite a lot, uh, but it's definitely finer. I'm gonna work on my tops a little bit. Tell me, what can I answer? Uh, Tanya asks, is it best to shape in, in one area or keep moving around? Move around, move around. If you can, work the whole surface. Think of the same way that you work a ball of clay or dough if you're making something. You, gotta, you want to condition the whole thing. Wool, as wool shrinks, as you needle felt it, it's going to pull wool towards it from other places. So as much as it's condensing down, it can also pull wool. And if you work the whole surface, then you won't end up with some hollow areas. And Stephanie asks, if you want to add some details and other colors onto the heart, what needle would you use? I would use the fine needle because you want to, if you're just doing some light surface design, you could use the fine needle. Now, you can make your hearts multicolored to start with by blending the wool. You could even make a solid base or even a, a base with core wool and add top design. But I would say use 
fine to medium needles. So medium would be going up to your 38 stars. So start from a 42 up to a 38 star, but anything more aggressive will leave indentations. So if that's your goal is to have indentations in lines, we'll then use a 32 or a 36. Hmm? Wendy shares, Marie, you felt very slow and deliberate. I have started <laughs> <laughs> I've started slowing down and I have noticed it really seems to be make it to make a bit of difference in my finished product. I appreciate you teaching me to take my time. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm kind of a slow <laughs> I'm kind of a slow folk, I think, with a lot of things. And um, when I needle felt, I'm not in a hurry. I'm never needle felting for production. I'm always needle felting for fun. And so I'm not in a rush. And if I'm in a rush, then I stop. I would stop. But I think, uh, yeah, I even lay out design slowly when I wet felt. And <laughs> it has been commented that I'm very slow. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. And Karen asks, do you have any tips on shaping the heart and then making it smooth? Is it just time poking it? Yes. Okay. So for shaping, like I'm going to really, now it's starting to get firm. Like notice it's getting firm and I, my fingers aren't pushing all the way through to the other side and I'm really pushing on it. But like this part I can feel is still a little, you know, a little mushy. So I'm going to gradually, I'm going to start to shape in this, this crevice here now. And if you want to really go after it, you can use your 36 triangular needle and really like, let's say I really want to swoop this edge in here. I don't use this really aggressive needle in this case, because I started all fluffy. I don't use it until it firms up. If you were building a shape like layer by layer by layer and you wanted it to be really firm on the inside, you could use this sooner. But because I started with the big lofty shape, I firm it up first and then I'll go back in with this really aggressive needle and start to shape it. I hope that makes sense. You'll know if you use an aggressive needle on something that's too loose and airy very soon, it just plunges through to the next continent. So that's the first answer. The second, so that's about shaping, is you can go gradual like I did until you're ready to really drive the shape in a new direction. For making it smooth, I like these 42 triangular needles and I personally find it's easier to get a smooth shape when you have a firm to semi-firm base like this. It's like, I'm trying to say it's kind of like, uh, If it has too much air in it, if your piece has too much air in it, when you needle felt one area, it really shows as a pockmark and the other areas look bumpy. So I think of smoothing it as getting out, people usually want to get rid of the holes, but I say instead get rid of the bumps. So needle felt all the bumps and you'll needle felt all those bumps and try and needle felt them down to the level of the holes. So what I'm going to do now, and what I would do is just sit and tack this with my 42 triangle. This is when I tend to needle felt a little faster because I'm just smoothing the surface. And constant needle felting with a fine needle and lots of different angles and lots of different directions will really smooth out that surface. And Robin asks, do you need to leave the, the bottom tip softer for putting on the stem? Mm -mm, harder. I'm going to leave it harder because I'm going to cut a hole in it, which I don't even know if I brought my scissors. Oh, I brought my awl though. If you, if you, if you make it really firm, you can poke a hole with an awl. Now mine's not really firm, but here's the something I want to tell, I mean, not really smooth. And here's something I want to tell you about that. Right now, my face is a good two feet from my heart. And if I'm at home and I'm needle felting, I'm gonna be like this. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, <laughs> you can't see me, here I am right here. I'm gonna be really <laughs> close to it if I'm at home. My nose is practically gonna be on it so that I can look at it very, very closely. I'm gonna have it close to my face. So if you find that your work is not all that detailed and you want it to be, 
and you want it to be. You want it to be smoother, you want it to be more refined, then improve your lighting, get yourself really comfortable, and get up close and personal to your work so that you're looking at it closely. And the closer you are to it, the more intimate you are to it, the easier it's gonna be to really smooth it out and take your time and make it look really nice. And Claire asks, is there a reason that you didn't start with core wool? Uh, because of my folding technique. You know, I find that in this case, when I'm using such a small amount of fiber, then I'm willing to use it. This can't even weigh a quarter of an ounce. And if I made the whole thing in core wool first, then I have to gracefully wrap it, you know, with my color. And it's actually, I find it just a little more of a challenge. And sometimes when you're poking, then you poke and you see the white or you add too much bulk. So when I'm making something so small, I don't start with core wool. I use my core wool um, maybe for like the innards, like of the pot, I'm gonna use it for the innards of the pot um, or I don't know, maybe something closer to the size of a tennis ball, but not this size. And that's just a personal preference. Other people might make it all in core wool first. So I would spend a lot of time on this little heart and make it just how you want it. But let me show you how to, how to make the little stem and something you might look at for that. And Anne, you ask me anything. I can use some, grab some scissors. I just have a little piece of paper here and what I'm going to do is make the leaves. Um, so I'm just going to cut something out that's sort of shaped like a leaf. It doesn't matter. This is just a guide. Sometimes having a paper guide can help you and you know I really don't use it all that often but I want to show it as an option. And for like the little leaf matter and that would be, this is going to be the little stems on the, uh, on the flower stem, the petals on the flower stem. Uh, you can just cut out a little paper shape to kind of guide your fiber towards. So I'm going to make these kind of to start. You can make them first or last. And I just have a little pinch of wool here, maybe roughly double the size of the little leaf you're going to make. And I'm going to leave this end a little loose. Give and pull it down so that we can wrap it on the stem. And all I'm going to do is just use this as a basic guide of how am I going to fold the fiber in. So you can use your stem or a toothpick or what skewer, whatever you have, and just kind of fold in towards that center peak, just like that, and needle felt it flat on your phone. In this case, we're doubling it over and getting the thickness is going to help you get something you can shape a little bit better. If it's too thin, it can be difficult to shape. And first I'm just gonna kind of tack it down. I'm not driving into the foam. I'm just tacking it down to get a basic, a basic shape and then I'll peel it off and work the other side. When you're working with something this thin, you kind of wanna do that, something that you want to stand on its own. And then now you can just shape it. I go right into the edges before too much time passes. If you go into the edges before too much time passes, then you kind of build up some girth there and that'll give you something that you can shape. If you wait too long, it just gets thin and mushy and very hard to work with and feels like it's always kind of a mess. So get some girth. Now, if you're ever trying to get a really specific shape, like if it was really important to you, most of the time it's not all that important to me. You could put your little paper template right on top or right on bottom, and then you can just use it as a guide of how you wanna guide your wool. So, oh, by the way, you could do the same thing with a heart. You could cut out a heart shape or a Christmas tree shape or whatever it is that you're wanting to shape. And with a paper guide on top, once you have some wool underneath, basically with some bulk, then you can use this to shape it this way. So that's just kind of a quick, a quick tip. Once you have that kind of going, then you can start to bow it and shape it how you want. Anything for me to answer yet, Anne? Anything coming up? Um, 
We doing okay? Yes. Okay. All right, so that's just a quick tip on like how you might form some little leaf parts. Really simple, kind of nondescript leaf parts. Not, you know, we're not making the fanciest of flowers. It's a pretty fantasy little flower. But spend your time on it. Any firming up or needle felting that you need to do on the leaf part itself should happen before you attach it to the stem because once you attach it to the stem, it's just too difficult. So I brought in my green floral wire here. This is usually 18 inches long and I just cut it uh, probably almost into thirds. You could use um, chenille stems if that's easier for you. Um, and this is what we're gonna do. We're just gonna kind of sort of wrap it around the wire. So needle nose pliers are helpful for that. And I like to curl in the wire on both tips so that it doesn't poke through the wool. And it also gives you a little something to grab onto. And then I'm just gonna take a nice long thin strip of this. So first I'll fold it in half just like we did before and I'll tear it in half. And if it's too thick, you can even split the thickness because you can put a couple of layers on there if that's comfortable for you to do, if it's more comfortable for you to do. And I run the wool through that little hooky do right there. So just put the wool right through there. And if you want, you can even mash that down after so that you get a nice um, tip. One of these is gonna go into the flower bowl and the other one is gonna go into the heart. So you might want that uh, to be sharp. You might decide you don't even want it to be bent, depending on how big your heart is. But we can spear it on there if we're diligent. So now I have something that I can roll and I just roll this towards myself. Let it be very thin here and not bulky because we're gonna go into the heart and just guide this all the way down the stem. I hold my tension here with finger and thumb, and then I twist with this hand. Hold tight, hold tight, hold tight. Now, if you're used to working with roving, like a New Zealand Corydale or something that's a really long staple length, and all the fibers are going in the same direction, this might be a little more challenging, but this MC1 batting will really grab onto itself and you can get it to dry felt to itself without even needle felting it on the wire. So wrap it all the way around and we'll just tack it down a little bit with needle felting, but look how you can just use your hands and physically dry felt it just by twisting your hand around it. Just try and go in the same direction. I changed my direction down here. Um, so I'll just twist it back. And Kathleen says, I don't have any core wool. What else could I use in the pot? Oh, just use other wool. Like, especially if you have scraps. If you have a bunch of scraps of MC1 or whatever scrap fiber you have, just use that in the pot. Anything that you have other scrap fiber. So notice how I've just done that, the dry felting. And now I'm gonna put my little leaves on. I'm gonna use these smaller ones that I brought in. Uh, and didn't I bring in another one? I think I did. Here's a couple that I made last night. And we'll put this heart on there. He's a little bit bigger and it'll look just like this. So we're gonna just stab our little heart on there and then put the little uh, leaves on there as well. So I brought an awl, um, which is like a crafter's ice pick <laughs> almost, and you can decide whether to go straight into the base or up the back. Like if you wanted to thread something onto a necklace or a piece of jewelry, you could go, you know, poke the hole right in there and, uh, you know, like thread it up through the back like that. Or in this case, I'm gonna go kind of almost in the bottom and this is why you want your piece to be fairly firm so that will spring back. Now you can also kind of cut a hole in there if you want uh, with your scissors and snip a little hole, but an awl is a nice way to make a hole and just drive it up further than you need it. And I'm gonna take my 
thinnest end and put it here in the heart. So now I'm going to squeeze this down. <laughs> Linda asks, where did you find a pink all? I love it. <laughs> I have no idea even. I don't know. I, I just buy those kinds of things either at the, at the sewing store or the craft store. So now we kind of got a little start on that and we can put our leaves. I wanted to put that on the stem before I put the leaves on. And you could even shape it more if you want now, like if you want it to swoop in a little more. Um, now is a fine time to shape it too. You know, you might embroider your heart. You might bead your heart. There's so many things you can do. So often I'm preparing for these little tutorials and I don't take them as far as you all do and can. You're all so talented that I, you know, always look forward to seeing what you do with things. So now I'm just going to wrap this around the stem and uh, I might needle felt it a little bit but you can just lay it on there and wrap it around because we can always add more wool right over the top. And I'm going to kind of stretch this batting out a little bit. You can, if you want to patch something, you can always add wool right over the top. So I'm going to let it show right there and I'm just going to twist it around and then I'm going to needle felt it in place. And Helen asks, could you put the wire in the heart? flower before you felt the flower? Yeah, I suppose you could. This is just kind of a, an easy way to make the heart shape and one way you might display that heart. So you could make this heart, you could make it on the wire if you want, or you could take the same heart and turn it into a magnet. You could turn it into a pin. You could turn it into a gift tag. You know, there's so many things you can do. And this was just one idea of something you can do with it. But I find it easier to make the heart uh, free freestanding first. Now notice that I'm just needle felting at a real sharp angle and trying not to hit the wire. I will hit the wire a couple of times, but as soon as you feel your needle start to bend or bow, back off, you know, so that you don't break it. And a couple of our felting friends want to know if, if, if you could use glue on the heart to make it more durable or if you have to use glue. You don't have to. I mean, I don't use glue a lot but you certainly could use glue if you want. You certainly could. You certainly could. And you can also, you know, make little flower parts to come up on the bottom if you want. So that's totally up to you. And I tend to not use glue because I don't have children or a bunch of people handle my stuff, but they don't come and try and take it apart in the shop. They're usually real respectful. But if you have kids playing with it, well, they're probably going to pull it off. <laughs> <laughs> they probably will. So that's how you attach the little stems. We have time to do we'll this, y'all. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with us, and I hope that was a fun tutorial. For those of you who are just getting started, needle felting hearts is a great place to start. And for those of you who already know how to needle felt, teach someone how to needle felt the heart, or maybe just don't be afraid to go back to those simple little projects because they're a great way to share both your craft and your heart with somebody else. They're super fun to do, something I love to make. I wanted to tell you all about some of the other tutorials we have coming up this year. Um, one is we are going to do a themed pin cushion. I've been working on that, so some people wanted to needle felt the pin cushion. We will do that, and I've been working on it. Another one is um, there's been a lot of requests to do the little cluster houses, and Anne's going to link to our Instagram for that. The cluster houses I did on a simple little background of wet felted MC1. It's like a little night scene. And then I mounted that onto a lavender linen. Anne's going to link to our Instagram. Follow us on Instagram. I'm still kind of getting our feet underneath us in that platform. But we do share some pictures and pictures of what our friends make there. The cluster houses is like the five or six posts down and you'll see it. It's kind of off to the center. So we're going to be doing that as a tutorial. And another one I'm working on is felted lanterns or light covers. So that's going to be a little bit longer and it will take me a little bit longer to set up. But I wanted you to know that we have lots more tutorials coming this year. And in just a few weeks, Kate Kaprowski is coming back. We're going to wet felt animal hoods and we're going to wet felt ruffle scarves and she's going to be our guest. So stay tuned for that. 
Now, one, one more thing, and Anne's going to share a link. We've been sharing a lot this week about Danny Ives' new book. We're so excited about that. It is called Painting with Wool, 16 Artful Projects. We are in the pre-sale now, promoting our book in advance. And the publisher, Abrams Book, is giving away a little free gift for people who pre-order the book and then register on Danny's site. So if you buy it from us, and sharing a link you can buy the book with us and then register on Danny's site and we provide the link right there on our product page um, for the free gift which happens to be a curated pack of some of Danny's favorite fibers and guess where they come from so we're super excited about that Danny's going to be here in March and we're going to do a book signing in the shop and we're also going to do a Facebook live book signing with her so I hope you'll join us that's going to be Saturday like March whatever's the last Saturday in March is when she'll be here and we'll go live so maybe y'all can like chit chat with her while she signs. So the fairies are coming back. We're going to give away some prizes like we always do for everyone who's been participating. Come on in. Everyone who's been participating during the live show. Anne has put your name into her fancy bowl and we're going to give away some gifts. Wonderful. Okay. Let's draw I'll first. Hold, I'll hold. Okay. You guys draw. Ready. <laughs> Angelina Flurry. Yay, Angelina! <laughs> Alrighty, Angelina, you win an MC1 Studio Pack in purples and berries. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Just like we were working with today. Yeah. Okay, who's next? Heart, oh, heart. Alright, here. Yeah. <laughs> Alright. Linda Hearn. Yay, Linda! Okay, Linda, you win. A merino top studio pack in Chasing Butterflies. Nice. <laughs> I love those colors. So fun. Okay, one more prize to give away. Me? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, I'll pick you read. Oh, I gotta get, I gotta filter them down. <laughs> Paula Underwood Dupree. <laughs> Yay, Paula! <laughs> Paula, you win. Fairy Hollow Specialty Designer Packs. <laughs> Woo! That's that was like one. one of our first ever designer pack designs based on my favorite colors. <laughs> one of my favorite color schemes. Congratulations, everybody. Thank you so much for watching us during the live show. This will be immediately available under videos, and then at least by tomorrow, it'll be up on YouTube as well if you want to watch it back and if you want to share it. So thanks so much for joining us today. We hope you have fun. Thanks. Have a Bye great guys. day. Thank you. Guys, thank you so much for joining us today. We hope this has been fun for you. Hey, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button so you can be notified every time we post a new video. And join us live on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock Central. We are live on Facebook at fb.com slash livingfelt. You can chime in, comment, and even win a prize. Be sure to also check out our group, Living Felt Friends, also on Facebook. We'll see you there.